Beckers reminding us why she is one of the nation's elite players. Smooth here, already has 27 points on 50% shooting. She's knocked down five threes. She has five rebounds, five assists, two steals, two blocks. This is a full, complete performance from Paige Beckers, who hits another level when the moment is bigger. We are in postseason time, and Paige Beckers wants us all to know it. Beckers is five off her season high which is 32 against Seton Hall earlier this year. Seven off her career high, which she had against Arkansas a couple of years ago. The other storyline is Olivia Olsen with the four fouls, but she came down on Ice Brady's foot near the end of the third quarter, and so she has been dealing with an ankle issue ever since. And also Emily Archibald fouled out of this game. John, 17 points in their last game. Scott blocked. Brutal for Archibald, so foul trouble and some injuries. If you're just joining us, Aliyah Edwards exited this game in the third quarter with a nose injury. She will not return, but since Edwards exited, UConn's outscored Providence 21 to six. Farrell to the basket, Bryn Farrell. Bryn Farrell, first bucket of the second half. She had a really big opening half on three threes. See if they can get her going a little bit. Three Friars in double figures. They've had 10 different players hit double figures in a game this season. Beckers is off. Brady battling. Morales Romero fighting for it. This is the Big East Tournament. Let's revisit that Olivia Olsen injury. Yeah, posting up here with Ice Brady and looks like just had an awkward landing. Just hate to see injuries any time of year. Hate to see injuries in postseason. See if they're able to get Olivia Olsen back in the game. The old catch and shoot is short. Gina Oriama throwing his hands up. I mean, just got to stay smart in shot selection. Morales Romero is long. That discipline. The Orion has been searching for, and that's playing to their strengths. Mule to Arnold and one. UConn can hit different levels in the transition game. Nika Mule grabbing the rebound, going right up the floor. Nobody meets her, able to get deep in the paint. Dishes over to KK Arnold and one. Bench is loving that one. And you mentioned it, John. We've seen a lot of plays like that since Aaliyah Edwards unfortunately had to exit the game. It's like it's awakened something deeper in her teammates. This program has fought through adversity on the injury front to the level that no other powerhouse in women's college basketball has had to deal with over these last four years. They know how to take a punch. And now Beckers goes to the deck and calls a timeout. She does do it all. We'll take a timeout too. Connecticut up by 18, looking to advance. is still behind the Providence bench getting looked at by the athletic training staff. They're working with her, taping her ankle, icing it, trying to have her walk a little bit, and she could really just barely put any pressure on that right ankle. Yeah, just a tough day for Olivia Olsen, who yesterday had 16 points and 12 rebounds. She's had some foul trouble today. Now the injury, trying to work through it and get her back out there. It's a tough break for the Friars. has 27. Here's Ice Brady who's been inserted into action here and gets the friendly bounce. Ice Brady showing some range there and set up nicely by Paige Beckers who drew two off of the screen and kicks it back to 
the confident freshman. Foso's had a nice day off this time, and it'll go back to UConn. Well, Kim, Gino Ariama told us this, as you see, of day. He said, look, we figure if we can get to 70, 75 points, it doesn't matter because we're never going to let the other team, at least in this league, get close to that. We'll let our defense do the talking, and right now Ice Brady's turning it on. That was a nice dish from Arnold. Let the freshman do the talking, K.K. Arnold's has shown how she can impact a game today in multiple levels that time creating and dishing over to ice brady who continues to be impressive stepping in for Aaliyah edwards back door and a lay-in for hall who's just checked in but that mindset at least right now looks the part of Oriel. Yeah, on the whole, this has been a lower scoring Big East Conference this season. A lot of games battling out the 50s or 60s, creating a team who can run it up. But outside of that, Gino trusts their defense once they're able to get into the 70s or 80s. Scott is fouled by Arnold. Arnold, not a fan of that. Yes, that's a big storyline in this conference tournament. There's a 24-4 and four team in the building. Now, two of their losses are to UConn, but the Creighton Blue Jays. We heard from multiple coaches this week that do not think Creighton is getting enough, enough recognition nationally for what they've done this season. The old with the steal. Gives it right back on the stake. Oh, Scott can't put in the bunny. Mule left open. Cash. Nika Mule's three point shooting has been pretty improved this season. She actually leads the team in terms of percentages 41% tied with Paige Beckers, but she can knock it down. Ooh, Nika. <laughs> mm, not happy right now. Foul on Brady. We have that look of shock. Let's see what Nika is upset about here. There's some lower body contact. I think maybe Nika thought she got called for the foul. She didn't. It was on Ice Brady. There was some lower body contact there. Well, Kim, they were within single digits early in this second half. But Fosa now has her third 20-point game of the season. If you begin to flip the page of the book ahead, how much stock are you buying in the Aaron Bath era? Oh, give me all the stock. I mean, we've had the pleasure of speaking with her on multiple times this season. Incredible to hear her vision, her positive outlook for this program. And, you know, they're not probably going to get a win here today, but I think great steps were taken for the program over the last two days. That was the fourth foul on Brady, by the way. Beckers knew she missed it. Got it back. She's fouled. All gas, no breaks right now for Paige Becker. She's not looking at the scoreboard. She's not looking at the time. She is giving 100% effort here until the final buzzer. 27 points, seven rebounds, and six assists. And we have to extend the box score to see what she's done on the defensive end as well. Waiting for it to load here, but I know she has at least three steals and two blocks. You are absolutely correct on both <laughs> numbers. Forget about the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and we get a timeout. We will stay here. Well, the looming question now will be, what's the, the latest on Aaliyah Edwards, who has just come out of the tunnel? Listen to this crowd. I can't lie, fans. 
Amanda, like my eyes are welling up a little bit. Just hearing this scene, it looks like she's getting a little bit emotional. Just how much she has meant to this program. She's coming out like a prize fighter. Take the cape off. Unfortunately, we can't get her back in the game today. Her parents so proud looking on, rocking the jersey. I really hope we get to see Aaliyah Edwards back in this Big East tournament. I hope this is not the last we see of her. And just took a really tough hit to the nose, as was reported. This was in the third quarter. I mean, she had taken hits all game, and I think, you know, that's what we were talking about, officials needing to get it under control a little bit. She's welling up here, so emotional for her to not be able to come into this game. But I, I sure do hope that we will see her tomorrow or beyond in this Big East tournament. In her she last, deserves it. she does. That ovation was incredible. And in her last 10 games, she's averaged over 20 points and close to 12 rebounds. Amazing productivity. That was a really powerful scene inside this building. Totally. One of the more emotional moments I've seen covering the sport. Shade is long this time, four and a half to go. Winner of this game will meet the winner of our next game coming up on FS2 at 2.30 Eastern time. It's Villanova and Marquette. And Fosa, 23 points for Grace of Fosa. She's had a phenomenal afternoon. And toughness is the word that we keep referring back to, but that is what she has personified for every minute she's been on the floor, whether offensively or defensively. Shot clock at six. Mule to K.K. Arnold, switch. You mentioned it earlier, John. K.K. Arnold not really known for having mind-blowing three-point numbers, but she is three of six from deep in this game. Just over 33% in the regular season. But as you know, as Arnold takes a shot, that's an offensive foul on Bandoma. Talk about her three-point numbers. We have, to, we have to get the stat on how many times K.K. Arnold has gotten on the floor this game. Every time we look, she is taking a hit. She's diving after a loose ball. And that is what you absolutely love to see from a freshman. Paige Becker says she's a joy to play with. Freshman to freshman, all three of these. Shade this time. The unselfishness of K.K. Arnold, she could have had a layup. She puts a little uh, analytics there, goes for the three instead of the open two. You use that phrase, all gas, no breaks. That's been UConn since Edwards went down. Just think of the minutes that they've played in this game. And yes, Providence is in their second game in two days, but UConn has only gone seven deep. They're playing big time minutes and they are still fully exerting. Arnold, the left hand, whoa. Now she's just showing off. Showtime, that's what I was gonna say. These, these freshmen are atypical. We talked to Gino before the game. He said ahead of the season, you know, I thought they were just gonna get their feet wet. Her and Ashlyn Shea play you know, maybe 10 minutes a game. They are now starting playing 30 plus minutes a game and making a huge impact. It wasn't the plan, but Gino Oriano has been used to going to plan B, C, D, E, FG the last couple of years. And these freshmen, they were gonna get a sprinkling of minutes. Not this month. It's now Oriema will bring in Bencourt. Listen to this for Paige Becker's 29 points. What does Paige do? She goes right to check in on her teammate, Aaliyah Edwards on the bench. 
Still just so tough to see Aaliyah Edwards looking emotional there. All banged up, but Paige making sure she's she's got her. Nice pass from Bencourt to Brady. Becker's just three off her season high today with those 29 as Arnold goes down. And now Arnold is hurt. Take a look here. So it, it looks like a hard impact. I mean, you hope that it's just a tough knee to the thigh type of situation. Obviously, we're not going to speculate, but another hit for UConn. And that's the, the issue for Gino Oriana. He, he doesn't really have a bench to go to to get his best players out of the game. He is. I think he's put in everybody that's available. He's taken out the three veterans, but he simply doesn't have a sub right now to take out KK Arnold or Ashlyn Shea. Look what he has to do. He has to bring Mule back into the game. He's out of Huskies. And he's already playing five players short this season. Now Arnold, it's good to see she's walking under her own power, but there's more players in sweatsuits than jerseys, unfortunately. Right. That is the reality that this UConn team has had to keep powering through game by game. And that's why Oriyama described this as nerve-wracking. Previously, they, they, they'd have an injury, and, and Kim, the national narrative was, well, they've got another player, they've got two or three, they're, they're an embarrassment of riches. No, not this UConn. They just lost so much as Brady hits that from Bencourt. What's well, been a silver lining here to Aaliyah Edwards going out? I think Ice Brady is finding some confidence here. Her first postseason game, she's had some nice moments offensively and defensively. Final minute here. Gino saying, "Slow it up, Nika. I, I had to put you back into the game, but let's." Take things down a notch. Let's close out this game safely. Eight on the shot clock here. Down to five for Caden Samuel. She'll lay it in. An exclamation point for the Huskies. Closing in on a 31st consecutive conference tournament win. And they'll be moving on to the semifinals. We'll meet the winner of Villanova and Marquette tomorrow. Aaliyah Edwards went down, but like they always do, the powerhouse Huskies counterpunched. UConn is on to the Big East semifinals. Embrace there, Don. I do want to take a moment to applaud the job that Erin Bath has done in her first season at Providence. A great tournament showing for them. Big things to come for the Friars. The question now, what will Leah Edwards' status be going forward with that nose injury suffered in the third quarter? Edwards has only ever missed one game in her career, so the senior will see what's in store Tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern time here on FS1 when the Huskies meet the winner of our next quarterfinal, which is between Villanova and Marquette coming up on FS2 at 2.30. Paige Beckers, 29 points, nine rebounds, six assists as we look at final stats. Yeah, this is an efficient offense. Gino had mentioned some shooting struggles coming into the tournament. Better than 50% from the floor, knocking down 11 threes. They really cleaned up the turnovers in the second half and then they got a lot Defense to offense, 21 points off of turnovers. Megan has paid.